tempted by the Kinetic 148 scale Pukara? Before you go ordering one from your favourite store, be it online or in the real world, come and have a look at what you get for your money right here on Gary's Stuff. Hi, I'm Gary and today I'm looking at the FMA IA-58 Pokhara Strike Aircraft in 148 scale from Kinetic. If you like the show, please remember to give it the Imperial thumbs up on the like button below as every like counts. And to support the channel at no cost to you, please subscribe. Hit the bell and you'll be notified of all my future content. Other ways to support the channel are listed in the information box below. Now before we take a look at the kit, why don't we look at the history of the Pokhara. The FMA Pukara is a twin turboprop ground attack aircraft made by the Fabrica Militar de Aviones in Argentina. It would have been relatively unknown had it not been involved in the 1982 Falklands War. Design on the aircraft began in the late 1960s and the first prototype flew in August 1969. A re-engined second prototype powered by Astazu turboprops flew the following year and this was the engine chosen for production. The Pukara was designed for use on short, unpaved airstrips with a rugged tricycle landing gear and the ability to use booster rockets for takeoff. Armament consists of two 20mm cannon and four 7.62mm machine guns in the nose, three hard points being available for the carriage of bombs or rockets for a total load of 1,620 kilos or just over 3,500 pounds. In May 1975, the first aircraft entered operational service flyer counterinsurgency missions in the north of Argentina. The most famous deployment was when a total of 24 aircraft were flown to the Falkland Islands in April 1982 during the Argentine invasion, operating from Port Stanley, as well as from improvised strips at Goose Green and Pebble Island. As a local ground attack force, the Pucaraz became a high priority target for the British, including a raid by the SAS on May 15, 1982, in which six aircraft were destroyed on the ground. On 28th of May, a British scout reconnaissance helicopter was shot down by two Pucaraz, the only confirmed air-to-air -air kill by Argentine forces during the war. Fifteen Pucaraz were lost to enemy action and accident during the war, after the Argentine surrender, 11 Pukaras were captured, some still airworthy, which were taken to the UK and flown for dissimilar air combat studies. Later versions of the Pukara were proposed, including a torpedo carrier and a single-seat attack aircraft, though neither reached service. Pukaras were also operated by Colombia, Sri Lanka and Uruguay, but exports of the type suffered from numerous cancelled contracts. The Pukara was retired from counterinsurgency operations in 2019. However, a version with new engines, equipment and four-bladed propellers was developed for border and maritime surveillance. The Pukara Phoenix will be in operation until the mid-2030s. This kit from Kinetic originated as a new tool in 2021 and was the first polystyrene kit of the aircraft in this scale. Previous 148th scale kits were cast in resin, including the Heritage Aviation Kit, the Aconcagua Kit from 2010, the Mirage Resin Set from 2012 and the Dukel Hobbies offering in 2021. In 172nd scale, the first kits were from Puki in Argentina in 1976. In the 1980s, rare planes did some VAC form releases, but an injection kit wasn't available until the special hobby release of 2003. This was later released by Airfix from 2008. Grand Limited also released the kit in 2006. And finally, Mini Wings released a 1 144 scale kit in resin that is still available.
So here we have the box of the Pukara in 148 scale from Kinetic. Box artwork is it's okay. It shows the uh, captured aircraft Zulu Delta 485 in simulated air combat with the Royal Air Force Phantom. That's what they did with it. They they did when they realised it was airworthy and uh, they took it back to the UK and tested it out in simulated air combat and air, uh, ground attack missions to see what the limitations of the aircraft were and how it could be defeated should it need to be in the future. And also it's a, an interesting exercise in dissimilar air combat. We've got something that's relatively slow but very manoeuvrable against something that's a lot faster and nowhere near as manoeuvrable and, and how the combat between them would, would potentially work. Interesting exercise. Anyway, so, yeah, Kinetic Gold is the company. It's an I-858 Pukara, as it says. This one belongs to the Royal Air Force, as it says there, too. It's 148 scale. The code is K48142. It says here the decals are designed by FCM decals. Very nice. And here it points out that when it's complete, the kit will be 297 millimeters long, 302 millimeters wide, and it's got 260 plus mm parts. It's got over 260 parts. I don't know why they wouldn't actually give you a proper part number, but there we go. Um, all very nice. On the this long side here, there's some information about the Pukara and what happened to this particular aircraft, A515, as it was when it was in Argentine service. Here, there's kind of interesting, there's some um, little reference photos which could be quite handy if you're going to do a little bit of extra detailing, especially in the cockpit area, that could be quite useful. And some features of the air aircraft here. And the other long side has the side elevation view of the aircraft Zulu Delta 485, what its camouflage looks like. And um, just a few little bits and pieces here, and a copyright notice of 2023. The short sides just essentially have a reboot of the the cover, big bold letters, IA58 Pukara Royal Air Force, product code and scale, just for when it's sitting on a, a shelf, uh, not sitting on a shelf like that, presumably. Okay, let's have a look and see what you get inside the box. The box is a top opening one. Inside we have our instruction sheet, which I'm going to guess has a decal sheet somewhere inside it. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Ah, we'll have a look in a minute. No nope, decals I can see. Big cellophane bag with all the parts. We'll have a look at in more detail another cellophane bag, which in itself cool, another cellophane bag on the inside for the photo which the clear parts are here. And indeed, here is the very simple and tiny decal sheet. But we'll have a look at all these different bits in more detail. So this is frame A, obviously the fuselage itself. These are the tailplanes, um, part of the rear fuselage here. And the flaps for the main wings. Kind of interesting that the flaps are posable up or down but the rudders and the elevators are set in one place. I guess that was a, a debate during the part count meeting of what bits we would uh, allow to be movable or posable, let's say. But anyway, part A is the fuselage. Frame B, uh, mainly wings, this one piece lower part of the wing, two piece upper part of the wing, Wheel wells for the main gear and for the nose gear, uh, beginnings of the ejection seats here, the cockpit tubs, um, probably the weapons pylons here, and uh, I think these are going to be parts of the interior, and instrument panels here as well, and a centerline fuel tank. This is frame C, and you get two of them, because essentially these are all the bits that are duplicated. So. We have the underwing, triple ejector racks, uh, gear, the wheels, parts of the engine. Uh, this would be underwing fuel tank, propeller, of course, got two propellers, it's twin engine. Parts of the bomb rack system here as well. Um, so 
basically everything that gets duplicated. Um, ejection seat parts here as well, interestingly. And then finally frame D for the grey plastic at least. Uh, nose wheel, main gear legs, nose wheel leg, um, all the undercarriage parts, various aerials and detector fins and whatever else, all the other bits and pieces of detailing, gun ports, um, gun ejection shoots, so on. Have a look at the plastic itself. Yeah, it looks all looks very nice. There's a little bit of um, mixing fronts here, but very, very little to notice. The mouldings look sharp. They look clean. Um, I like the riveting. I love the, the these little sort of, uh, I don't know what they are, the, these rectangular little cutouts there. All very smart, all very good. It's part of the flat mechanism, obviously, but I don't know what they're called. Those little cutouts. They're probably called cutouts. Again, um, the ailerons are fixed, so all the flying surfaces are fixed apart from the flaps, which you can pose up or down. But, you know, the riveting looks very smart. The moulding itself looks clean and crisp. Should be. It's a relatively young mould. Not really young, but relatively young. Very good, I think. The cockpit area, cockpit tub, has you know enough detail on the side panels to be able to bring all these out. All of the engine controls look good. We can obviously you can fly the aircraft from the front or the back by lots of things. It's completely duplicated. Yeah, it's all very nice. That 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 will dry brush up nicely and maybe some spot colors along here for the engine controls you know fire warnings and whatever um these little side parts for the interior of the cabin again all very nicely molded these are the um stores racks for the underside of the wings and here we have the instrument panels duplicated instrument panels again these will probably dry brush really nicely and we can just add some little bits of spot color here and there to brighten it up as well the landing gear bays are very nicely molded lots and lots of detail in there not that i'll necessarily be showing a lot of it because you know once the model's on its wheels you probably won't see most of this but if you're really into accurate molding and uh, accurate model making you want to get everything absolutely right i'm sure you can with these and then put it on a mirror so that everyone can see inside. But very nicely done. And if you have a look at some of the smaller detail here, the wheels look nicely molded, very clean, very crisp. Uh, no tread marks on the on them, which is, I think is actually quite accurate. I don't think they had treads on the Pukara. The main gear legs, very nice indeed. These actuators, I'm not sure, because the actuators actually do have um, indentations on both sides, whether that was just weight, you know, getting rid of some weight, or whether they actually drilled all the way through to get rid of weight, I, I actually don't know. I'd have to look that up if I were worried about it. Some of these smaller parts, I can see very cleanly moulded, no flash there at all, which is lovely. Uh, likewise, these very small parts, these aerials and sensors and whatever else, all very clean indeed. Really nice. Now, the only bits I don't know about, again, are these, these uh, scissor knee parts. Again, it looks like they should be drilled out, but I don't know for sure. Again, the for the nose gear, um, there are little indentations there which suggest it would be drilled through, but on the other side, it's just, where are we? Oh yeah, there we go. They're just plain parts. So there's no drill through. There's no like indentation on the other side to correspond with the drill through. So, there. so maybe I won't bother. And it's such a small detail. Yeah, for me, it might be a bit too much detail for other model makers who have got much more time to make their things. And much more dedication to their craft these things are going to be important these are the um, ports for the 20 millimeter cannon in the belly 
And again, they've got nice rivet detail around them, which is excellent. That should be able to be brought out quite nicely. There is a small sheet of photo etch as well. Um, I think these parts are liners around the canopy from memory. Um, I think rear view mirrors to the canopy as well. Um, uh, there's seat belts here, various all sorts of seat belts for parts of the ejection seat system. And also there's uh, anti-static um, little sort of quills of metal for the, for the anti-static that go on the trailing edges of the control surfaces, which is a nice touch. We do have a decal sheet. It's fairly minimal. I have to say, um, it was an aircraft that was captured and so had RF roundels, fin flashes and serial number put on. However, um, I'm kind of surprised there's not more uh, stenciling on this. Maybe they, I don't think they've ever painted the stencils because the aircraft is in the original Argentine camouflage. So... Maybe they just didn't put lot stencils on the aircraft, which is fine by me. The printing looks okay. I'm not convinced about the colours of the, these, the reds in particular, on the decals, but they'll be fine. They'll be okay. But let's see what the uh, print quality is like a bit closer up. There you go, a bit of a closer up look with our trusty half millimetre pencil lead here. You can see these. This lettering on the rescue symbol is nice black's always a good color to get right um not completely convinced by these um do you know what i would have thought that the rf would have replaced these with british symbols because it makes sense if you have some sort of you know you have a crash landing or whatever and you want people on the ground to be aware of what's going on you would put standard british i'm going to replace these with british ones and also they're going to be much much sharper printed than these i suspect again the i think it's the red that's letting this set down in a way it's not as crisp as the black can be and it's certainly this is a slightly strange looking red to my eyes obviously i can't share that with you terribly well because of the way Computers and camcorders and computers and then YouTube affects colour um, that's way beyond my control. You just have to take it from me. This looks a little bit dull and a little bit too purple for my liking. And here's the instruction sheet um, printed just in black and white. The reprise of the box art here which is not real that very visible because it's not that well printed in black and white the information about the pokara here that was on the side of the box if you remember translation of all of the symbology and the recommended tools for here which is yeah, it's nice to see that i guess in inside uh, we have various bits where they tell you what the frames are um, aftermarket service I guess that's for if you've lost a bit you can say what part code it is and so on and so forth color call outs are here obviously all of them are from ammo there's other options available but for some of it and then the instructions themselves they look okay um, I'm not going to say they look amazing but they're okay um, straightforward printing here it says add weight, doesn't say how much, which is a bit of a shame, really. But there we go, just fill it with weight, I suppose. Yeah, the instruction, the kinetic do get knocked for their instructions, and sometimes the instructions are particularly awful, but these look okay. These are those tiny little um, photo etch things I said about the anti static um, quills that they go on there. The ordnance is here, and then. <laughs> Your ordnance options well either you have bomb racks with no bombs you have tanks or you have a tank on the center pylon as well that's pretty much so i'm i am however going to keep hold of these uh triplet ejector racks only because i've got another project planned where those will be really useful so 
there we go and then uh, the scheme layout this is where some color would be really useful but no um, they all the color call outs are down here for, for what you get uh, the single scheme in the kit so that's the instruction manual so there it is the FMA Pukara in one forty eight scale from Kinetic. If you've enjoyed the video, please do give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much for watching. See you again soon. Goodbye.